the Red Team Ops course from Zero Point Security. This is the certification that I am currently going through at the moment. I actually started straight onto the certification after I finished the OSCP, so no break for me. I actually felt a bit of burnout coming before I passed the OACP, but after that, it's all gone. I feel ready to go and extremely motivated. So to begin with some of the course highlights, this course is essentially a Cobalt Strike and an Active Directory course kind of rolled into one. The highlight is definitely the Cobalt Strike aspect of this course because in the labs, they do give you an access to an instance of Cobalt Strike that you can use. I haven't actually seen another course out there on the market with this kind of setup. The Cobalt Strike license costs like 3,500 or so if you wanna buy it. And if you don't already work in a pen testing job, it's probably not gonna be possible to get Cobalt Strike experience. Of course, unless you wanna download cracked versions of it online, not that I condone that. And besides most of the versions you download that way is probably backdoored with a rat anyway. So it's probably not a good idea to do that. For me, I actually didn't have any Cobalt Strike experience before going into the certification. So it was really awesome to get a rundown of the tool. The course also goes through a comprehensive AD methodology. This course really filled out my knowledge gaps that I had when uh, sort of learning AD by myself using free online resources. And since this is a red teaming cert, it also goes through OPSEC. So OPSEC is a term that is borrowed from military. Essentially, it means you are trying to make your attacks fly under the radar so the enemy doesn't detect what you're doing. So if you wanna go into red teaming, you're gonna to have to stop using methods that are loud and easily detectable and favor the techniques that is going to blend into existing traffic a bit more. So throughout the course, there are OPSEC notes attached to the modules that you'll be going through. For example, it'll show you, you can do it this way, which has bad OPSEC, is probably gonna be detected more easily. Instead, you should use a different way, which is going to be less easily detected. Out of the three, Cobalt Strike was definitely my favorite of the course. Coming off of OACP, where you're essentially working off of the Linux command line using open source tooling to do Active Directory pen testing, when I first started using Cobalt Strike, it actually felt a bit limiting compared to the command line. And if you didn't know already, Cobalt Strike is written in Java, so you have to click this ugly Java GUI that I didn't really like to do. That initial hump was something I felt a little bit resistant to. But by the end of the course, I was like, Cobalt Strike is the shit. <laughs> like I was sold on Cobalt Strike. Once the modules build you up to the functionality of Cobalt Strike, it really grows on you. Like the things that it can do, especially the way that it handles uh, sort of SOX proxies, a pivoting, a port forwards, that area, for me, my networking skills isn't really as solid as where I'd like it to be. So for pivoting, port forwarding, I can do it, but I had to kind of think about it a lot. And if something did go wrong, it would be pretty painful for me to troubleshoot it. But Cobalt Strike pretty much takes care of everything. It's almost magic how it tunnels everything through the beacons nicely. Once you've got your beacon set up, even if you are say three or four pivots deep into a network, everything to you still feels like a flat network structure where you can easily upload, download files, execute binaries. You can move your SOX proxies to the machine that you want with a few simple commands. Everything just ran really smoothly and I didn't really have any issues with setting up any of the pivoting and the proxying and all that. On my next AD engagement, I'll definitely be playing around with Cobalt Strike a bit more. And this course was a really good intro in Cobalt Strike where it doesn't teach you everything in terms of Cobalt Strike, but it leads you to those doors and 
if you want to dig deeper on any of those topics, um, you have the path laid out in front of you and you can do your own research. So what do you need to start this course? I would say the difficulty is beginner to intermediate. You need some Active Directory knowledge to start. I think it's probably the best idea to get some knowledge. You shouldn't really be going into this course without knowing what Active Directory is and haven't played around with any of the open source tooling around pen testing Active Directory. I think this course will work really good if you already have some of that experience, for example, with Impacket, CrackMap, Exec. If you can tell me what those two are and have played around with some of these tools, then you're probably ready for the course uh, because essentially you'll be doing everything in Cobalt Strike in this course and it'll be good for you to have a background knowledge to some of the techniques shown in this course just so you can understand what the heck is actually going on and say, oh, actually that is something I can do in Impact as well. I could do it this way in Cobalt Strike. So some of that knowledge was really useful to my learning experience throughout this course. If you don't know what these tools are or have very little experience in Active Directory, I wouldn't stress too much. Just jump on Hack the Box, do a couple of Active Directory boxes and play around with some of these tools. And you, know, you should probably be ready to start this course playing around with the tools for a few weeks. Cobalt Strike really makes things very easy. In some cases, I think it makes it too easy as it abstracts a lot of the things that's going on in the background. Some people have asked me whether this is good for OSCP prep or doing it after the OSCP or something along those lines. Um, I think for the OSCP, some of the topics that this course covers is going to be beyond the scope of the OSCP. The methodology in Red Team Ops is more comprehensive. You could do this course before OSCP. Um, after you've done this, your Active Directory skills will be way above what you need for the OSCP. So this is the core structure of Red Team Ops. It's updated in 2021, so previous to that, they didn't have an instance of Cobalt Strike that they provided you in the labs. But since the update, the labs have been completely overhauled and you actually get a Cobalt Strike instance, you get a Splunk instance, and the whole labs is essentially an Active Directory playground. It's not like the OSCP labs where everything is like a CTF and you have to hack into the machines to get access to it. You have all console access to all the machines in the lab straight away in the web browser through Guacamole. So you can go into all the labs, get console access. It's not really like you have to hack into the machines. It's more of a playground where you can test out all the attacks with full access to everything. The course material itself is text plus video. They do have accompanying videos to some of the modules, which I found pretty helpful. The course material is essentially a walkthrough of the labs showcasing the various attacks that you should learn throughout the course. Each module builds upon the last and it has a good learning curve, I feel, throughout the whole course. At no point in time did I feel overwhelmed with the material. And I was actually able to go through it without too many hiccups, I guess partially helped by my existing Active Directory knowledge. The course itself, you get lifetime access to the course material and also future updates as well. In terms of the labs on the Zero Point Security website, they recommend 40 hours of study. I spent about 40 hours so far and I have pretty much gone through all the course material. I think that's a pretty good guideline of how much you need. If you don't have the previous Active Directory knowledge, probably 60 hours is enough. And lab access is actually sold per hour. I'll go into that a bit further. So some study tips if you wanna consider the certification. 
You should follow along and duplicate each step as you go through the modules. The first time I went through the course, I sort of skim read it and skipped some modules where I already knew what was going on. But actually on subsequent run throughs of the material, I tried to go through each step and actually make every exploit work as set out in the labs. And I did run into some hiccups where I had to troubleshoot and I learned during that process. So as you go through, definitely duplicate each step. And as you do so, create your own cheat sheet because the module was built upon each other based on the previous module. So the learning curve is good, but the way that it's organized, you probably can organize it in a better way that makes more sense. Some minor issues I found with the course, there were a couple of modules that were inconsistent with the accompanying video. The exploit wouldn't work, but the video showed a different method where it did work. Perhaps it's something to do with how the labs are set up or whether users are logged onto some machines and so forth. But I don't really have too much issues with that one. Both methods are definitely still valid if certain requirements are met. So I don't really have any issues with that. I've noted down both methods in my notes and I will be referring to it if I do come up with similar situations in actual pen tests in the future. Another thing is some of the modules could include just a bit more detail. At the start of the course, everything is fleshed out very nicely. They include the perfect amount of detail for you to understand what is going on and then perform the exploit. Some of the later modules, it could include a bit more detail. Some of them were just like, do this command and then the exploit works. So for those modules, I would have liked to see a bit more explanation, perhaps just like a couple of sentences, uh, just to flesh things out a bit more. The CRTO exam is a 48 hour exam spread over four days. So what that means is you get 40 hours to complete your exam, but the exam itself is pausable. So actually you can think of it as 12 hours a day over four days. So you can have 48 hours of solid time on the exam rather than the OACP, which actually includes the time you're supposed to take breaks and sleep, etc. So it's a very generous amount of hours they're giving you for the exam. In terms of passing the exam, you need to get six out of the eight flags to pass. And there is no proctoring, there is no reporting requirements. In terms of the difficulty of the exam, one of my colleagues actually recently sat the exam and he completed all the flags in about 12 or so hours. So I would say it's fairly easy if you have gone through all the course material. I think this exam is very fair, very fair if you compare it to something like the OACP where you're going to be tested what is on the course and if you've studied it well, you know how to do all the exploits, you have it in your notes. I think the exam is going to be relatively easy. From the reviews I've seen online, I haven't seen many people talk about failing this exam. That is not to say the course is easy and you're not going to learn much. You definitely do learn a lot in the course, just that the exam itself is very fair in terms of what it's testing. Now I haven't actually done the exam myself. I have booked it in in two weeks time over the Christmas period. I just can't really find the time to do it at the moment. But I'm pretty much ready to take the exam. I'll give you guys another update how I go. I don't expect it to be too difficult. Hopefully I pass in the first go. And finally, the cost of the course. The course material itself costs £349. If that's in US dollars, it's like 410 or so. And the lab time is sold 1.25 pounds per hour. The lab time itself is pausable. So what that means is you can stop the labs at any time you want and you won't consume any lab hours. I took about 40 hours to complete the course. So Probably I would recommend buying it in 10 hour chunks and see how you go throughout the course. By the end of it, you still have the course material, you still have your labs. So if you want to test out some Cobalt Strike stuff down the road, you can just purchase a couple of hours and jump in the lab and test some stuff out. 
For exam retakes, it's 99 pounds. Like I mentioned previously, the exam is probably on the easier side, especially compared to something like the OSCP where people fail multiple times. So if you do go through the course thoroughly and learn all the stuff it's trying to teach, I don't imagine you'll need the exam retake, but if you do need it, it's 99 pounds, pretty reasonable. I think the course itself is definitely worth the money that you're paying for it. Considering the Cobalt Strike is gonna be more than 3K if you buy the license, this is the only course out there that is giving you that Cobalt Strike hands-on experience. I'll just quickly mention that on the Cobalt Strike website itself, you can actually get some pretty good training material on it. Um, there are video modules here where you can go through, but obviously this is not that useful if you don't have a Cobalt Strike instance to access anyway. So what I might do next is purchase a bit more lab time and go through a bit more Cobalt Strike from the training material on the website itself because it does look pretty interesting and it may fill out some further knowledge gaps. So that is it. Um, that's all I want to stay on the certification at the moment. Very awesome course content. I learned a lot during it, uh, especially since I do want to go towards red teaming in the future. The OPSEC bits was great, Cobalt Strike experience was great. I am completely sold on Cobalt Strike now. It is an awesome framework for pen testing. And I do kind of feel that is why a lot of um, ransomware gangs actually use Cobalt Strike as their preferred weapon of choice. If you're interested in signing up, head over to Zero Point Security and go to the red team op section and you can read through this to get a bit more understanding of the course syllabus and what is required to pass the exam. So that's it for this video. I will make another update on this when I hopefully pass the exam in the Christmas break. So I will see you then.